What is good, beautiful people? I wonder if I should do this with my headphones in or not. Probably not. Probably is better without them. One sec. Uh, no, I'm gonna take them out. Okie dokie. So we're gonna do this in one shot, one take, because I have had enough of refilming in my past. So I'm gonna do a little uh, welcome to the YouTube Q and A. So, um, I went ahead a couple days ago, asked for some questions on my Instagram story. So, just going to field some of these questions and give my best responses and best answers. So, hopefully, you can find some value from these answers. And yeah. Here we go. So, first question is from, I wonder if I should put like who it's from. Um, does it look weird if I'm like looking this way or if I'm looking like the camera's right there? Let me see if I can like flip it. I mean, oh, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> so, the first question is from at the Platinum Psychic, and it is, what is the best antidote for wanting a love partner but still doing life alone? So, I would say, in my personal experience, I think that you should be, I think everyone has a different life circumstance and life situation as far as their relationships go and their love partners, right? So some people meet their high school sweethearts and they marry them and they're with them forever and they're with them until the day they die and they grow with them and they, um, you know, that's that. And some people are like that. And some other people will go through several relationships. Um, but my personal experience, I have found a lot of self-discovery on and growth from just being by myself and being the best person for myself because I am single and being um, on my own. And I think for me, that's gonna, that's, that's worked the best way to then hopefully one day be with someone and be together with someone so that I am the best version of myself for that person. Um, right now, I'm gonna be the best version of myself for myself. And, you know, maybe one day, hopefully someday that there will be a Mrs. Trot out there that I can share this life with. So, um, yeah, I guess my best antidote or best advice for that would be just to focus on yourself and become the best version of yourself for yourself. And, you become the most attractive partner. I guess how you attract, I'm trying to think, I, did, I made a post on something like this. It was how you attract someone of quality is becoming someone of quality, right? So become someone, you know, become the most attractive partner that you can be and you will attract more, you know, the, the most attractive partner into your life. So there you go. Question two is from at Patty, McInerney zero zero Patty underscore McInerney zero zero. So hi, can I ask if you want to lose weight and gain muscle, should I just focus on one first or both? So my advice for this is that if you've had no specific weight training experience that you can actually focus on both and actually execute and do both at the same time, you can actually lose fat and gain muscle at the same time because your body's not used to this type of stimulus. It's very novice. So um, if you are a very beginner as far as weight training goes, then you can actually do this. Um, but if you do have some experience under your belt as far as lifting and weight training goes, then typically it is, you know, it's a sliding scale rate of um, being able to do both at the same time. So um, my advice would be to pick one that you want to do. Um, so if you want to lose weight, lose fat, then eat in a caloric deficit, um, you know, get on a good weight training regimen, um, and you know, you'll be able to lose weight like that. If you want to gain muscle, 
uh, which is basically the equivalent of gaining weight. Typically, if you have some experience under your belt, then I mean, you know, eating a caloric surplus, uh, you know, really your weight regimen can be very, very similar as a cut. I know it is for me. Um, that's just what works for me. So yeah. Um, next question is from at miracle picker and it is, when are you getting married? So not for a while. <laughs> so right now I'm single and probably I don't have a day or date or age of when I want to be married and start a family and have all these things that, you know, people are so in a hurry and so in a rush to do. Um, and, and for me, whenever that time you know, feels right, um, when it comes to love and when I'm with someone, um, you know, I want to be, I want to be sure, I want to be as sure that as, as I can be, you know, I don't think there's some magical number that I'm just going to be, you know, I hit a certain age and I say, oh, I'm this age, I'm just going to pick someone from the pack, right? So I can be married and have a family. No, that's not how it works. Um, at least for me and what I want, right? So, um, you know, I'm going to be patient in waiting for that person to come into my life. And, um, you know, whenever that time is right, uh, the time will, will be there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, probably not for some time though. Next question is from at Beham at I8697. And his question is, sorry, I'm just fixing this camera on my phone. Um, his question is, which is the best book to read from in your opinion? So, you know, I think there's a lot of really good books um, out there, right? And I'm a big fan of, or a big proponent of reading because I think it, it reminds you of certain, it can remind you of certain ways of living or skill sets that you can learn that, you know, you, some, you may not be ex, you're exposing yourself to them in your daily life. So um, that's why I, I'm a big fan of reading and I think it, it gets you off your phone if you have a physical book. And so I've read, uh, you know, several books throughout my life, but, um, and I'm a big fan of kind of self-help books and you know, personal development. And the one book that I can really point to that really changed my life for good, whenever I kind of look back and think of some of the books that I read, um, <laughs> the number one book that I would recommend is called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. So I read this when I was 18 years old, I was a freshman in college. Um, and everyone, you know, obviously freshman in college, you know, joining frats, sororities, going out and partying and, um, you know, doing all that. And, um, you know, I did a little bit of that, but that wasn't really my prerogative, right? That wasn't really my goal was to kind of fit in and be cool and do this. Like I was, I mean, there's a part of me, right? That, that did, but, um, I think there's also a part of me that was also didn't really find a lot of like fulfillment from doing that. Um, so I remember reading this book, you know, this, I think this was right around the time when like all the people on my, you know, the people that I'm really friends with were joining frats. And I was like, you know, that's not really, that's not really my vibe. It's not really my kind of lifestyle I want to live. Um, and I remember reading this book, um, and I found it because I'd been following some fitness influencers and there was one specifically, his name was Matt Ogus, who read the book and he was kind of re recommending it. And I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. So, um, you know, I bought it and I read it and um, it really changed my life because it taught me to be present and give your full undivided attention to the current moment to whom, whomever you are with, wherever you are at. Um, and you know, it's, it brought me a lot of peace into my life. So the power of now, but Eckhart Tolle. Uh, next question is what have you learned from being on the show Love Island from at Jaiva Marisi? Um, so I honestly think this kind of stems off of, and I think a lot of people have different experiences from doing um, shows like that, but in my experience, the biggest thing that I learned from being on the show 
was obviously probably just stemming from one of my answers that I just previously said was, um, you know, we didn't have any, you had an idea of what time it was throughout the day, right? Um, but you didn't really know what, what time it was because you didn't have your phone or anything like that. So, um, you know, the biggest thing that I learned was just, it was honestly just a, a, another opportunity for me to to practice being present with the people that I, were, I was with and, and really soaking up that moment of my life and, and, and that entire experience overall um, without any distractions, right? Um, and just giving people my, my full undivided attention and listening to them and hearing them um, and really getting to know them more. So um, I'd say that was the biggest thing that I learned was just to um, you know, be present and give people your full undivided attention. So next question is, what is your biggest achievement so far by at um, Karel BNTZ? Yes, yeah, a couple questions. I'm going to answer them real quick. Um, so, what is your biggest achievement so far? Uh, so, for me, I remember answering some of these in job interviews whenever they would ask me, and it's nothing really like business wise or success wise, um, you know, and in, in kind of like personal growth or anything like that throughout my life. But the biggest achievement for me so far is actually, and I look back on this, um, and it's really spoke to you know, who I think my family thinks of me and, and what they think of me. So um, my, you know, my aunt on my mom's side chose me, or my aunt and uncle chose me to be my little cousin's godfather. And I point to that as being my biggest achievement because it, it showed, it kind of spoke to me and, and said, you know, how my family thinks of me and he thinks that, you know, I can be a good role model for, um, you know, my little cousin. So that's my biggest achievement. Um, so far as being my little cousin's godfather. So next question from the same person is something you can't live without. Let's see here. What is something that I can't live without? Um, probably I would say, honestly, I would probably say like my headphones and like my phone. Um, because I, ever since kind of moving on my own and, and, and out here to Los Angeles, um, you know, I do a lot of things on my own, right? Like I go grocery shopping, I go to work out and I, you know, whenever I'm leaving the house, I always kind of pull my headphones in um, with my phone. I just, I, I listen to positive podcasts, um, people that I want to be like, I follow their content. And, you know, I really, if I didn't have that, I, I honestly, think it'd be very difficult to um, have, you know, grown or continue to grow in the direction that I want to. So, um, you know, I really see my, these guys, AirPods and obviously my phone. So, um, next question is what keeps you motivated from K-I-Y-R-L-L-B-N-C-Z. So what keeps me motivated is really, I guess, what my potential could be um, each and every day. So it's more internal, right, than, than external or trying to prove something to someone else or my family or my friends. Um, I will say also, also carrying my, my last name to a high standard and what my family would want me to carry it as. So that motivates me as well. Um, but I would say my potential, right is what really motivates me and, and continues me to keep working hard each and every day taking each day as it comes and treating it as a new day um and really living in that day and not allowing myself to live in my past or allowing myself to worry about the future and really just living in that day of you know what can i do to reach my potential or, or discover that my pension discover my potential or um, you know, actualize that. So I would say that is, um, you know, what motivates me every day. Next question is from Jeanette Cabral 10. And she asks, would you ever live in Houston, Texas? Yes, so that is somewhere that I actually want to move after living in LA. Um, so my lease is up in October or at the end of September of 2022. 
And ideally, I would like to move down to Houston after my lease is up. So, yes. Next question is from at Laguera7. And they ask, they ask, will you do another reality show in the future? No, I will not do another reality show in the future. Um, this is not where I see myself uh, kind of going forward from here. So next question is from Sonile underscore K. And they ask, best way, to, best way to get over someone. So... Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, I've been through few relationships in my life and I would say the best way to get over someone is really to then fall in love with yourself and then fall in love with your self growth and, and working on yourself. Um, because well, forever, what, for whatever reason, it didn't work out in your past with the people that you were with or the person that you were with. Um, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from those experiences and putting yourself in those vulnerable situations. And it, it, it didn't work out for whatever reason. Um, you know, for, you know, for whatever reason happened. Right. Um, but I think there's a lot of value to be found right in, in those experiences with those people. Um, you learn how to love someone, you learn how to be in a relationship, right? Um, and you learn the, the type of person that you want to be in a relationship with. Um, so I think there's a lot of value to be found in that. Um, but I would say the best way to get over, to get over someone that you were with in the past is really to just fall in love with yourself and fall in love with your self growth and your personal development um, so that you can become the most attractive partner um, that you can possibly be. So whenever that time comes that you, you know, that, that person comes into your life, that you'll be ready, um, that you'll be ready for whoever that, that ideal partner is. Um, and I think that's what you always should be working towards. I think that's always what you should be. Um, you should always be bettering yourself, not, not to, you know, be this, you know, it's not all because of love, right? I want to be, I want to be the best person because I want to be the best partner for someone. Like that's not really what drives me or motivates me. I'm, I want to be the best person, the best individual that I can be for myself. And it just so happens that, you know, love is there and love is something that, um, you actually get to share your life with someone. So, um, that I think the, the partner kind of comes after you become the best person, um, or best version of yourself. And I think a lot of people that you shared that your life with in the past have a hundred percent helped you. You actually wouldn't be where you are today without these people. So you have to be very thankful and blessed to have shared your life with, with those people that have been in your past. Um, so the next question is from at Lucy underscore Melancon. And they ask faith in God. Do you have faith in God? So I absolutely do. I was raised Catholic growing up um, with my family and uh, we went to church every single Sunday. I got, you know, I was baptized, got my first communion, um, was confirmed. So, um, you know, that is my religion. I do have faith in God. Um, you know, I, I, you know, obviously was very involved with going to church and going to CCD and everything growing up. Um, and then I got into college and I started working every single weekend, um, just saving some money. So um, I kind of got away from actually going to church really. But um, you know, I pray every single night. Um, I just remind myself of you know how, how blessed I am uh, to live the life that I live and be surrounded by the people that I that I have in my life. Um, and you know, it's all thanks to to him. So absolutely, I do have faith in God. So here's an interesting one. Next question is from. I ask this question. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, at Uti Puleds, and they ask, when you're at when you are at the peak of your death, would you rather watch the sun rise or the sunset? So I remember so whenever I first saw this. You know, my, my natural inclination was to say, I'd rather watch the sunset. Um, 
to kind of, you know, close the curtain on, on a life well lived. Um, however, after kind of considering a little bit, I would actually like to watch the sunrise because I think within that moment in that, that time, you know, if I were to, you know, if I were to die at the very, <laughs> at the very end of the sun, either the sunset or the sunrise, um, then I would, I would like to die at the end of the sunrise because it's, it's the beginning and gives me hope for, for a new life after, after this life well lived. So would like to watch the sunrise. All right, so I won't make this too long, but next question is what do you look for in a girl from at Fabiana underscore Ram Thon Zuali? So I look for, I would say three things in a, in a girl. Um, it's not even that I'm like really looking for them. It's just like a feeling or that I have like when I'm with them and I like get this feeling that they are of, they have these qualities, um, you know, in, in them. So they are, being supportive, secure, and having drive. So um, to explain a little bit more, so, um, you know, I look for someone who is very supportive in in my endeavors because you know, I'm always gonna be supportive of whatever they choose to do or want to do with their life. Um, I look for someone who is secure in their own skin. Um, you know, they're confident in who they are and, and what and who they are not. And, they're not trying to be anyone else but themselves. And then the last one is that they have drive or you no know, motivation and aspirations to um, be better each and every day. So those are what I look for in a girl. Uh, next question is from my boy, Mike, um, at Mikeatron underscore four and two. So he asked, what is the most toxic board game you enjoy playing with friends or family? So I wouldn't say it's really toxic, but it's, it's probably one of the, uh, for the opposite of toxic, I guess, but. Um, I don't know why I'm giving this answer, but this is what I'm gonna say. So probably like the, the most, the funniest board game that I've ever played with my family and friends is actually Apples to Apples. So, oh no, why did I say that? Cards Against Humanity. I guess those are kind of the same, right? Cards Against Humanity for sure. Um, I remember times playing these like on weekends with my family and friends where like I would just, I'm like a crier if I laugh so hard. So um, I remember literally having tears of laughter, like playing, playing the cards against humanity with my family and friends before. So yeah, that one. Right. Next question is what are your macros from at Maddie J all day? Um, and he asks, what are your macros and body goals? So my current macros are, um, catered towards being more in a lean gain, lean bulk phase. So they are, um, so I'm currently about 195 and I want to get up to 205 or 210 over the next couple months. So, few months. So my macros accordingly based upon that are uh, my calories are at 30 through 20, protein is 200, carb 450, and fat 80 grams. Excuse me. Um, next question is, do you like or did you like public accounting? From at Jenna underscore CYR2. Um, so she asked, did you like public accounting? Was it hard to quit your job? So I personally did not enjoy working in public accounting. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think anything, any job, any career is for everyone, right? Then obviously that's why not, you know, everyone has different jobs, right? Um, but you know, my experience, I, um, I did several internships and, you know, I just wanted to be successful, right? Growing up and you know, I saw my parents and they, they, they took this, this path that, you know, they eventually became super successful or in their own right, um, in my eyes, right? You know, they're gonna be successful in whatever they do because I love them. And so I just kind of thought like, okay, working this corporate job, you know, um, climbing the corporate ladder was, was how you became successful and you made a lot of money. You know, I was like, okay, let's do that. So, um, you know, I worked in public accounting, I had some internships. Um, my internships were about, um, I guess like all my corporate internships and my um, my public accounting you know, work experience after school was probably about two years. And I, um, 
didn't really enjoy it a whole lot. Um, and then second question was, was it hard to quit your job? Um, yes, it was actually very hard. It was, it wasn't hard because I had another job lined up. It wasn't like I was quitting a job and um, going into like being unemployed, right? Um, but that was the reason why I moved to LA is because I got a job out here. Um, but it was actually, it wasn't hard to, in the moment to be like, got this new job in LA, um, to like be like, oh, I'm taking this. But it was, it was difficult to then come to the point of telling my coworkers and the people that I started with in my class that, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm actually leaving um, because to kind of get a little deeper a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I used to think that, you know, I couldn't do a lot of things on my own. Like I had to have this, this friend group, these, these people in my life, um, like my family to then like help me get through, like to like go along with me in life. Right. So, um, you know, when I, when I moved to LA, you know, I realized a lot of stuff that like, dang, dude, like I can do so much on my own. Um, and I actually prefer it ironically. Um, you know, I'm super introverted, but, um, you know, I used to think like I couldn't do things like on my own. Um, like I couldn't work in a place and I didn't have friends. Right. So, you know, part of the reason why I started at in public accounting was because I knew I had friends there and, um, we we're going to do this experience together and we we're going to work there together. Right. Um, and then coming to the point where I was like, you know, this isn't worth it just to do it because I have friends here. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta do what makes the most sense for my life and, and where I'm at in my life situation. So, um, that was probably the most hard thing was, was telling my like supervisors and managers and all that and partners and stuff that I was like, Hey, um, you know, I got a new job and I'm actually leaving. So yeah, it was actually pretty hard for me. Um, next question is from Oris88 and they ask, where do you work? Um, only a couple more questions and it's probably gonna be like half an hour long, so I'm sorry. But um, they ask, where do you work? So um, location wise, I live in Los Angeles right now and I work there. Um, I'm a full-time online personal training coach and um, nutrition coach as well. So um, yeah, that's what I kind of do full-time for my work now. And the next question, I gotta ask this question. Um, sorry, 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 let me see consistently. Oh, this is from Sked, at Skadila. And they ask, what is something you can consistently rely on to motivate you, rain or shine? So for me, I guess these like certain cues that I actually use to remind myself to motivate me or, or, or take each day as it comes and try and be the best version of myself each and every day. Um, I listen to this one, there's you know, a podcast called Real AF by Andy Frisella. Um, that helps me a lot. There's new episodes, a couple episodes a week. So I listen to that, try and listen to that when they come out. Um, and there's a guy by the name of David Goggins who is, um, he's done, he's, he's like a Navy SEAL. He's done a lot of different things um, throughout his life. And he's, he's just, I listen to this soundcloud motivation thing it's like an hour and a half like i literally wake up each morning i'm super freaking weird you guys are like who the crap is this dude um but i'll listen to it and it literally just puts me in a mindset to be like yo like you gotta you gotta win this day and you gotta take each day as it comes but you gotta forget about what happened like yesterday or last week but today's a new day and you just have to um attack it and give it all you got. So, um, I listen to some podcasts, listen to some play, you know, SoundCloud playlists. Um, but okay. Sorry. <laughs> Seem like just chill. All right. Um, like overreacted there. Sheesh, this is impossible. There. Sick. Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and yeah, so uh, it's motivating me. It's um, really just like putting myself in this mindset and and being able to really develop my mind to then um, 
be disciplined, right? Self-discipline rather than to kind of rely on constantly external motivation. So, I um, mean, that's kind of the things that I do. So last um, two questions is, um, this one is from Pretty Angelo 17 and they ask, how to stop chasing someone who can't love me back? Um, I think I answered this also previously, but um, I don't think you really should be chasing anyone. I don't think you should, especially if they don't love you back. Um, you know, love in, in being with someone and dating someone and, and sharing your life with them and relationships, like they have a huge impact on on how you see yourself, where you, where you end up in your life. Um, so, you know, I, like, I feel like it's definitely a feeling and you know, when you, you feel a certain type of way about someone. Um, but number one, don't take, don't take, don't take that personally. Do not take that personally. Um, it does not speak about who you are or, you know, who you are as a person because they, they seek something else or they seek, they seek some, they want someone else. Um, do not take that personally. Um, that has everything to do with, you know, what they want and has nothing to do with who you are, who you actually are. So, um, I would just say, you know, it's easy to just rebound and, and, and then kind of offload all of your problems or whatever, even, I don't know if you have any problems, right? Probably not, but, um, we all have problems, but like, don't just then direct that love and energy to then someone else and then not really deal with every, whatever was going on or whatever the reason was, um, that maybe it didn't work out before, but just focus on yourself, love yourself, deal with what you got to deal with, um, and become the best partner that you could possibly be a version of yourself and direct all that love back to you. So that, that would be my advice. Um, and the last question is from Christine.Saunders86. Yeah. Um, she asked, what would you say is your biggest strength and biggest weakness? So I will start off with my biggest strength. And I think my biggest strength is listening and being present with whomever that I am with. So uh, I think nowadays, like everyone wants to have a voice. Everyone wants